Today's edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Drobo, a family of safe, expandable, yet simple to use storage arrays. Drobos are designed to protect your important data forever. This holiday season, give someone a Drobo to keep all their files and memories safe forever. And by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Learn more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we've been so busy with gift guides and preparing for the holidays that we we haven't talked to some of our friends about some of their other projects. This is one, though, I wanted to make sure we got out before the holidays because so many people are going to be giving and getting Apple Watches. And the, the most logical thing to give or get to give with an Apple Watch is take control of Apple Watch um, by the Take Control series. Uh, so we have not one, but two Take Control authors here to talk about this one, which makes it a little unusual. And by the way, just in case you were wondering, I dressed for the occasion to match the, uh, the cover of the book. So first up, let's, let's get this, and we'll talk about why they're both here. Uh, Mr. Jeff Carlson. Jeff, it's good Hello. to have you back. We haven't talked for a while. I know. No, it's been a busy year. Yes, yes, it Thanks has. Thanks for having me back. Hey, it's, it's always good to have you. Um, also, his fellow Take Control author, Mr. Joe Kissel. Joe, it seems like I just talked to you. Yeah, I've, I've been actually camping out underneath Chuck's Christmas tree. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> you it's guys are just in left. separate rooms in Chuck's house, right? Right. Is, is that the sound I've heard coming in the middle of the night? Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. So I, I'll let you two just riff on this just for a second. This is, by the way, to, uh, Take Control of Apple Watch 1.3. So there's some changes, revisions, and we'll talk about what those are. Um, cause, cause this is a new edition, new, not new edition, but new version of the book. Um, mm -hmm. but why are you both here? Well, um, so it, an interesting story. Um, <laughs> actually it, it's a very short story. Um, last year, uh, when the Apple watch came out, um, I wrote this guide. Um, it's one of the, literally one of the favorite books that I've written. Um, just because, uh, you know, it, it's a brand new topic, and I think the watch is exceptionally cool. Um, and then when we, um, when I think it was uh, Watch OS 2 came out, we updated the book. And then Watch OS 3 came out. Unfortunately, the timing didn't work out on my end. So um, talking to Adam and Tanya at Take Control, uh, Tanya said, wait, I have got a great idea. Let's bring Joe in to update the book. And... Um, from my point of view, that was great because Joe did all the work. Yay! <laughs> um, so you know, it, it was it was definitely important to get a revision out because uh, Watch OS three has um, you know a, a lot of big changes, a lot of um, improvements, and of course you've got the Apple Watch Series two, so you also have hardware. Um, it it just wasn't something that we could push into 2017 and um, you know have people struggle with seeing things that are quite different in the book to, compared to what they would get for a new thing. So, um, and since Joe and I have worked together for such a long time, it, 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 there wasn't even a question of, should Joe do this? It was mostly, <laughs> does Joe want to do this? Great. Let's just go forward on that. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, <laughs> so, so I, I, I will tell my part of the story too. <laughs> Um, you know, Jeff and I have worked together on various other take control books in the past, uh, you know, like Jeff edited many uh, editions of my uh, backups book and so forth. And so, you know, we've 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 worked on each other's stuff before. And so that that felt kind of natural. Um, when the original Apple Watch came out, I did not get one. And the reason I did not get one was uh, was really simple. Uh, number one, I didn't have three hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and and number two, I didn't have any problems that I felt a watch would solve, like, you know, timekeeping. Um, <laughs> so like for me, tech purchases, I, I don't I don't have like lots of disposable income. So when I'm making a tech purchase, I buy things that that 
fix problems for me or that, you know, save me time, save me effort. And, and my, my judgment at the time was, well, Apple watch seems really, really cool. Literally all of my friends have them. Um, but I don't have an extra $350. And so this isn't something that I can really justify having just because it's cool. If it, if it were fixing a problem that I had, that would be something different. Um, uh, so when the idea came up to uh, to update Jeff's book, uh, all of a sudden, uh, two two interesting things happened. Uh, number one was uh, I did have three hundred fifty dollars because mm-hmm. I was getting paid to do this book. Um, <laughs> I was getting paid, that helps. Let's say more than three hundred fifty dollars. And mm-hmm. and number two, I I had a need that uh, having a watch uh, would solve, namely. Um, earning money. So it just, it fit really, per- it, it, it was, it was perfect. And What's that um, earning money app. I keep missing that one. It's, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta triple press the crown and then. <laughs> oh, right. The triple. Okay. Triple so, uh, so, so it was great because I've, I've really enjoyed uh, owning an Apple watch. It has, it has definitely enriched my life in the, the few months that I've owned it. I'm glad to have it. Um, I'm, I'm glad to have gotten paid for it. And it was cool. Um, so, you know, it wasn't just like editing. It was really, there was a, this was a, this was a big change. There were lots of new topics and words in the book. And, and when Tanya was, was reading over, uh, the, the changes, she made a comment along the lines of, of, she was really impressed that, um, she, she couldn't tell where Jeff's writing left off and mine began that it seemed very smooth to her. Um, which I thought was neat. Like, I mean, I, I didn't really make an, a special extra effort to write like Jeff, but I think it's more like Jeff and I sort of write similarly enough to each other that it kind of just automatically blended. And it was, that was cool. That, that, that just, that felt, that felt very like synergistic to me. So, so it was a fun project. As, far, as far as I know, this is a first in take control history that this kind of collaboration or this kind of, I don't know, partnership uh, existed. I mean, I know there's there's al- there's always an author and then there's the tech tech editor and the the, the normal editor and all those things. But this one, th- this feels, uh, again, unique. As far as I know, I mean, you know, we, we let Glenn think that he's written all of his books and then change everything. But besides that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- there, there have certainly been cases where, um, you know, where, where an editor did a lot of free writing, <laughs> um, but I don't. I don't. It, I certainly have not been involved in any situation like this before, where either one of my books has been, you know, updated by somebody else, or I have updated somebody else's book. If if that that may have happened to somebody else, but if if so, I wasn't involved in it. So, um, but I, you know, I, I think that this the the project went went pretty smoothly, um, considering that you know I'm I'm jumping in and, and messing with somebody else's stuff. I would say the project went very smoothly, especially for me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it went smoothly. <laughs> well, then I may turn to Joe and, and ask, you know, we're, we're doing a little bit of inside baseball, but I do think it's interesting. Uh, Joe, you're used to crafting your books your way. And here yeah. you picked up uh, Jeff's and then I guess had, uh, for consistency's sake, I would think, sort of had to follow the way he crafted the book, but then fill in the information and and adapt yourself. So is, was that a yeah. big challenge? Well, it was a little weird. I mean, um, what, one of, one of the first things I noticed was that, you know, Jeff's outline is not the same as my outline would have been. Mm-hmm. I, I would have approached things as I would have sort of divided things up a little bit differently. I would have put things in a different order. And there got to be a couple of points where it's like, okay, you know, this, this, this one chapter it, it can't exist anymore. It has to go. Um, and so now I have to put a new chapter. I have to put a couple of new chapters in and, and where do those go? And there were a couple of topics that the Jeff had written about so nicely, but they just no longer fit in with like, you know, new watches and watch OS three and so forth. And I'm like, well, I've got to, I, I've got to rip stuff out. And, and that it, I felt a little nervous doing that because it's like, it's somebody else's work of art, you know? And I, I, I tried to do as little violence to the text as I could. Um, we, there were actually, so, so th- there's, there's sort of another, another element to this too, which is that, that Sholly, uh, Sholly McFarlane, uh, did the, did the editing on this and, um, she had not had an Apple watch either before 
uh, this project. So this this got got two of us owning Apple Watches now, and um, in in a number of places. Shelly would like I, you know, Jeff wrote something. I would make my additions or changes, and then Shelly would would change it further or or make certain comments. And I'm just like, eh, and like, uh, the, like it's it it, it 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 gave me weird feelings because she <laughs> she would say, yeah, but you should you shouldn't do this here, or you should talk about this, or you should do this differently. I'm like, yeah, okay, but but what you're editing is not what I wrote. What you're editing is what Jeff wrote, and and. And it was fine before, and like it just it was it 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 was weird. Have like to try to justify <laughs> not changing something that I, I don't know. It it was an odd experience. I mean, it's fine. We're all friends, all right. We have oh, yeah. we have yeah. our little professional disagreement, which is it's fine. <laughs> but <laughs> it was just it was just a little bit odd um, trying to trying to figure out boundaries of like what what is okay to change and what shouldn't change and what needs to change just because it would make it a better book and what need, what needs to change because it's new material. And it was, it was a bit of an adventure. Well, you know, it, it, sorry, it, it, it points to, um, uh, I don't want to sound totally cheesy, but, um, you know, like, like all these books are collaborative. They, they have to be. Um, and so, you know, when when I said that that I was happy to know that Joe was going to be the one taking this on, um, it's not just because I know that Joe was a good writer and he would get all the technical details, you know, nailed and all of that. Um, but it's because, you know, um, I trusted him to do whatever he needed to do with the book. Um, I, you know, there, there are definitely uh, projects that I've done where I've felt a lot more ownership or I've, you know, been... Um, you know, certainly open to edits, but not if it's like real giant changes. And I've worked on, on other book projects where, um, you know, like, like the, the base of it was done by some other author. And then I came in to, to update things, um, not take control projects, but, um, for other publishers. And so, you know, sometimes like, like that can get kind of weird, but in this case, um, you know, like, I, I trust Joe and I trust Sholly. And if they're going to, you know, change my words, there's going to be a good reason for it. It's not just because, you know, they're like, oh, this is a terrible turn of phrase. I would never say that. Or, you know, even uh, trying to have them think about, oh, what would Jeff say in this situation? Um, you know, like it, it all it all merges together pretty well. Um, I, I would also say that part of this, too, the, this book has had an interesting history and in that the first version that we released came out before the watch was even available for sale. We wanted to have um, basically like a placeholder for people who were trying to figure out what model they were going to get and all of that. So, you know, you, you look at the initial uh, version and compared to this version, it's going to be a lot different just because, you know, it's, it has that shift of focus. We've had the watch now for a year and a half and, you know, all, all that experience gets built in and, and stuff gets moved around and that's okay. I, I, before we move on from this, I, I am kind of curious though, based on what Joe was saying, was Shawi the editor on the first version or was it somebody no. else? So that, that even makes it more interesting that there are two editors here trying to edit two different authors in the same book. Yep. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Today's edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Drobo, a family of safe, expandable, yet simple to use storage arrays. Drobos are designed to protect your important data forever. This holiday season, give someone a Drobo to keep all their files and memories safe forever. Starting on Wednesday, December 14th, Drobo will be celebrating the 12 days of giving with prizes from some really great folks who are also friends of ours. Prizes from Seagate, Drobo itself, Tidbits, Smile, Joe on Tech, This Week in Photo, Mac Geek Gab, The Next Track, and a whole lot more. If you enter and win, fantastic. Happy Holidays. If you don't, you can still get a little something for yourself or someone you care about by visiting drobostore.com before December 31st and using the discount code MV20 to take 20% off the Drobo 5D, Drobo 5DT, Drobo 5N, and any 8-bay or 12-bay Drobo model. That's a savings of $100 to $800, depending on which model is right for you. 
Grobo Marketing Coordinator Alex Herbert and I talked about the 12 days of giving and what kinds of things you'll find on Drobo's social media presences. Why is Drobo doing the 12 days of giving? So Drobo is doing the 12 days of giving um, to really just show appreciation for all the Drobo fans and um, users out there. We just wanted a way to um, bring joy this holiday season, and we thought this was a great way to do it. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. On Dr Facebook, you can find us just under Drobo and Twitter as well. Instagram, you can find us under The Real Drobo. On our social platforms, we like to post um, different educational things. Um, we like to show how other users and businesses are using Drobo um, and what workflow challenges it solves for them. We also like to um, post different reviews of our products um, to give a different perspective. Um, and we also have a photo contest going on right now with Seagate, where you can win a Drobo 5 Bay of your choice and two 6TB Ironwood NAS Seagate drives. Um, so look on our social media for that. Um, we also post webinars um, to show how to use Drobo with other applications and setting, setting it up and unboxings and all of that. So, you need to visit Drobo on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram to get the 12 Days of Giving hashtag, use it, and win yourself something special for the holidays. Or visit drobostore.com, use the discount code MV20, and get 20% off a of Drobo 5D, Drobo 5DT, Drobo 5N, or any 8 or 12 bay Drobo. Or do both. Tis the season. Happy holidays, and thanks to Drobo for their support of Mac Voices. So, I guess, Joe, I, I'll direct the questions to you, and Jeff can jump in. But as we speak, now we have um, we have WatchOS 3, and we have Series 0, Series 1, and Series 2 Apple Watches. Um, so there's there had to be a lot of meat here for the, the, the new version of this book. There, there was a lot. And, you know, when I, when I was first asked to do this, I sort of looked through Jeff's book as it existed and looked through what I knew at that time of what was going to be in watchOS 3. This is before it was released. And I'm like, okay, yeah, it looks like this, 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 and this will change. And then as I started getting into writing, I'm like, that changed too. Oh, that wasn't kind of mentioned in the release notes. Oh, and there's this new thing too. There were, there, there were a lot. So, um, so like I had, you know, the books always have like what's new in this version and, and the list of what's new in this version, which I'm just looking at right now, it lo looks really short. Is that uh, there's basically four things. Well, one of those things is the new watch models, but the new watch models have a lot of stuff, you know, um, as, as you say, you know, like the, the GPS and the waterproofness and like the, um, the water lock and like things that things that apply to just the new hardware models and the, the new ceramic edition and things like that. And then there's one one little bullet that's oh watch OS three, but then that bullet that says watch OS three is new it says refer to this other page, and the other page is like all this stuff that's <laughs> new in watch OS three, and so each one of those extra you know bullets of what's new in watch OS three has its own text somewhere, and sometimes it's like a few paragraphs, sometimes it's an entirely new chapter. Um, and, and, you know, watch OS three was definitely the, 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 the biggest thing by far. Um, so yeah, only two, two pages of things are what's new in watch OS three, the control center, the dock, new watch faces, uh, changes to the activity app, lots of changes to the workout app, the new breathe app, find my friends, um, home kit support, um, reminders, uh, Apple Pay changes, um, medical ID stuff, messages, SOS, unlocking your Mac, just all this stuff, a lot of, lot of stuff. <laughs> what do you think is the, what do you think is the biggest um, improvement or what do you, th maybe, maybe a better way to say is what are, what are the most important changes that we've seen for people that maybe Hey, if getting their first Apple Watch, but really I'm also thinking about the people who may be upgrading from an earlier version of the Apple Watch. Well, the interesting thing from my perspective is that my first experience of using the Apple Watch was with WatchOS 3. I never I never used WatchOS 1 or 2. I, I never had that experience. I read about people using it a lot. I'm, I was familiar with it, but I never actually used it. So when people are saying things like, oh, man, you know, uh, the dock is so much better than glances. 
I'm like, okay, I'll take your word for it. I never had glances or like, oh man, apps open so much more quickly now than they used to. Like, okay, that's, I, they just, they seem fine to me. They seem normal <laughs> to me. I never, I never experienced a slowness, so I don't know. So I, I am not a good person to make that comparison. Um, I, I can say I, I really like what I see. Um, there are some new things that like, one of the first things I turned off was the breathe app because like, I don't, I don't have time for breathing. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> And like, you know, there, there are some things just like, all right, that's whatever, but I'm not going to use that. But, um, uh, I, I like, I like control center. I like the dock. I like the way activity and workout work. Those, those all sort of suit me. Um, but maybe Jeff, you could speak to some of what, what you felt the, the most significant changes were. Well, I, I think one of the interesting things about the watch in general, um, especially, you know, coming from the old version to to the new version, um, and, and I should probably point out that I still have the the, the series zero. Um, I've not had a chance to go and see if if the hardware actually does make a lot of speed difference, um, and so I'm just going to assume that it is. But I I, I right now don't have three hundred fifty dollars to go buy a new one. <laughs> You should. What you should do is you should get a gig updating somebody's book, hey, and then you would have. That's a good idea. Um, so you know, um, I I desperately want to think that that the in the hardware uh, realm that that the speed helps because um, you know it's things are still a little pokey on on the original version. Um, not so much that that. Um, I, obviously not so much that I'm running out to buy a new one. Um, but, uh, you know, like, like there's still a, a bit of a lag. And so I, I hope that that's, um, either gone or, you know, it's only a mild annoyance. Um, but there are things like, um, oh, well, to get back to my, my first thought, um, w what's interesting about the watch is that there are a lot of features on it that, um, some people will use heavily and some people will never use. And there are things from the, the earlier versions of watch OS that, you know, like they looked great in demos and we sort of expected that we'd be using it a lot and never did. So like, like using, um, uh, the, the touch messaging, um, digital touch, um, like when, when Apple, uh, announced that feature and they were showing like like you can just sort of ping somebody with a tap on their wrist or you can draw a little picture or you can send your heartbeat we're like well that's kind of a neat idea like i could see myself doing that you know just to like like send a little you know um ping to my wife and say hello or something like that um she's not yet gotten a watch so that makes it a lot more difficult but um after we did that um, the only time I ended up actually using that was sending notes to uh, my friend Agan, um, who's also done some take control stuff, um, when I was showing off the feature to other people. And so, um, you know, in, in WatchOS 3, um, the, the way to get to that was you would press the side button and that would bring up your contacts and then you could do Touch ID and blah, blah, blah. And clearly nobody was using that. Um, and so now uh, they they change the side button to the dock, and so that's you know one way to to um, cycle through a lot of the apps that you want, um, you know. So like th things like that that you think you're going to use, and then you really don't. And then there are other things that that really come to the front that you didn't expect. Um, it, even you know now after having a watch for a year and a half, one of my favorite features. Um, it's not new in Watch OS 3, excuse me, Watch OS 3. Um, but when I get a phone call on my phone, um, it rings on my on my watch, and I can dismiss it because I only answer phone calls from people that I know. And so I don't have to, you know, dig my phone out of the pocket or, um, you know, find it on my desk or whatever. Um, and it seems like a small, silly thing, but I use it every single day to avoid you know, dumb phone calls. Um, so like, like that and, and using messages. Um, I, I would say the, the other sort of significant new feature um, that I think has become significant is the, the ability to just swipe between watch faces. And 
I don't even know if they demonstrated that as a feature when they announced watchOS 3, but, um, you know, like the, the first time it happened, I thought I had screwed something up. Um, and so if, if you switch between watch faces, like you have kind of an everyday one, and then maybe you have one that's more for working out or one that, you know, you it's nicer when you go out to dinner or something. Um, like all you have to do is just swipe once and, and you get to it. So it, it's like little things like that that end up being uh, more interesting, more used than than some of the other you know, signature features like breathe, breathe, great idea, great idea. And, and even though, um, like I still use the, the, the stand reminders that, that, uh, pop up at 10 minutes to the hour and those don't annoy me, but for some reason having breathe pop up every time in the most inconvenient time, I was just like, Oh, forget this. I'm banishing it forever. The, the, the stand reminders, I gotta say, like I I'm standing right now. I'm, I'm I'm at a standing <laughs> desk. I stand to work, and so but my watch can't tell that I'm standing. It can only tell if you if you're moving around. If you change it, so like my, what what my arms do when I'm standing is no different from what my arms do when I'm sitting. So even though I'm standing, the freaking thing goes off every hour. I'm like, okay, just just like just like do this to make it shut up because I'm standing already. Okay? <laughs> I am standing. Um, so that's like I get it. Like I don't. Thanks, but can't, I wish I could tell him. On the other hand, um, one feature that I have used many times, and and I was just like, when I realized that this feature did not exist in earlier watches, I'm like, how could anybody have 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 done have, you know used this device without this feature? That is Scribble. I use Scribble oh, all okay. the time. Hmm. So basically, you get a message on your watch. And you need to reply, but the reply that you want to make is not one of the canned replies that you've previously set up. And maybe you are in a situation where you can't or don't want to dictate a reply. Uh, Scribble lets you just draw the letters on the on your watch face with your finger. And I mean, you're not going to write a long message that way. You're just going to write a few words. But I use that all the time, and I find it incredibly useful. And I, I think that not having that in earlier watches would have drive, driven me to distraction. Yeah, definitely. This is why I, I love doing these shows, because I'm, I'm always fascinated by the feature that means so much to Joe. I don't think I've used it more than twice. And, <laughs> and, and, and I, do, I, I, I don't use the Breathe app. I do like to breathe. But... Um, <laughs> You know, I, I, but I, but I also, just, Joe, your 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 shaking of the wrist thing is an interesting yeah. way of you know being able to dismiss it. And I know that's yeah. not a feature, but it would be a feature yeah. request. So, <laughs> but but that's yeah, that's really interesting. I, I did want to. I'll go to one of my favorite features, and because I'm curious, I don't think I realized that there were any changes in in WatchOS three, um, and that's Apple Pay. What changed mm, yeah. in, with Apple Pay in the WatchOS three? Because I've been paying with my watch the same way I was before. Yeah. Um, in addition to using Apple Pay in person, you can yet now use your watch to make online purchases with Safari on your Mac. Oh, that's so right. That's, that's the new thing in Apple Pay. That's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's now. See, that's one of my killer features for this watch. Um, is it, just it, it speeds you through checkouts. I I honestly do feel more secure about it, and it's not something yeah. I really. Do. I obsess over, but at the same time, it just feels so nice. Just tap, tap the screen, take the receipt, and go. Yeah, I use I use Apple Pay on my watch all the time, and I also use I still use like the Wallet app because, like, for Starbucks, I went to Starbucks this morning. I paid with mm -hmm. the you know the barcode in my Wallet app because just paying with Apple Pay, I could do that, but then that wouldn't get me my Starbucks rewards things. So. Right. Um, so I, but, but that's no, really no more difficult than, than using Apple pay, but, um, one way or the other, um, it, n not only do I use it a lot, but very often it, it prompts conversations like, Oh, I've never actually seen someone do that before. That's, you know, even, even, even now, you know, end of 2016, people are still saying, I've never seen anybody pay with something with their, what pay for something with their watch before. So um, you know, I went to, went to Starbucks this morning and had this whole long conversation with the barista about, you know, is, is the, is the Apple watch really as good as they say? Cause I thought about getting, get, thought about getting one. And I, you know, so we, I think I might've, might've persuaded him to get an Apple watch. 
Smile, and their amazing suite of productivity software is sponsoring today's edition of Mac Voices. Smile helps you get more done with PDF Pen, available in various flavors for Mac and iOS, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iOS, and Text Expander for Mac and iOS. Get all the details at smilesoftware.com. PDF Pen from Smile lets you do all those things with PDFs that you wanted to but can't. Things like editing them. Things like annotating them. Things like securely redacting them so that information you don't want seen can't be seen. Things like exporting your PDFs in Word format so they can be edited with Microsoft Word or Apple's Pages. Things like running optical character recognition on them so those annoying PDFs that come from the office copy or scanner can be used the way you want them to. Those are just some of the things you knew you wanted to do but couldn't. But there are other things that you might not have thought of. Things like storing your PDFs in the cloud using Dropbox or iCloud. Editing them on your iDevice with PDF Pen for iPad and iPhone. Reordering or deleting pages in multi-page PDFs. Step up to PDF Pen Pro for interactive PDF forms, exporting to Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF archive formats. Capture whole websites into a PDF for reference or offline viewing, and much, much more. Now, in the new PDF Pen 8.3, Smile has added touch bar support, so that shiny new MacBook Pro with touch bar just became all the more powerful, since you can use Apple's latest and greatest with Smile's latest and greatest. Check out PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro for Mac right now by downloading the free trial at smilesoftware.com and see if you can find something you want to do with PDFs that you can't. If you do, let Smile know. They're probably working on it already. If you don't, then buy the flavor of PDF Pen that suits your needs directly from Smile at smilesoftware.com and tell them Chuck sent you. Their response will probably be, Chuck who? That's PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro, now with touch bar support from Smile, the makers of world-class software, at smilesoftware.com. Thanks to Smile for their support of Mac Voices. Good deal. Nice. Jeff, what, uh, what are your critical features uh, in, in Apple Watch? Well, um, starting from you know, the, the very beginning, I think um, having notifications, that's, I, I mean, really, um, I would say the Apple Watch is great for uh, telling time and, and getting notifications. Um, and, you know, and, and the fact that you can control what those are, because at first, um, if, if everything is turned on, then you're just like, oh, make, make it all stop. Um, but for example, um, in my mail app on my phone, I have several people set up as VIPs, and you can set it up so that um, whenever you get an email message from a VIP, it will go to your phone and you'll be able to tell right away. So, you know, whenever Adam or Tanya sends me an email, I get it right there. Um, and that, that just helps, you know, make sure you don't miss important things or... Um, uh, so I do I do that. Um, I'm glad that I've not had to use the emergency SOS feature, but I'm glad that it's there. Um, and um, I, I think, strangely enough, um, I would have to add Siri to this, which um, is kind of a, like like I, I'm a little surprised at saying that because um, I I think it's definitely improved a bit um, uh, and. Maybe this is just my personal experience. I've ha I'm having to retrain myself a little because um, with with the the earlier versions, you would um, kind of have to like like raise the watch and say those magic words that I will not say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, and like 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 do that in sort of one motion for it to do that. And and I just got so used to that. And now. Um, it seems, at least on mine, like I have to raise the watch, wait for the screen to appear, and then say it. Um, but uh, I use that all the time for, you know, like like little simple things, uh, you know, like what's the weather, et cetera. Um, but since I put HomeKit things into my house, um, I use it a lot to say, you know, um, turn off the office lights or uh, set the bright scene or, um, you know, turn the printer on upstairs, things like that, that I could totally do from my phone. Um, but, you know, like it, it's right here on my watch. So it's easy to do. Yeah, I, I will. I will definitely agree with that. My use of Siri has has risen dramatically since owning this watch, and I, I love the fact. Okay, so so very often in my life, um, 
one or both of my hands is is full. And so I like that, okay, like I, I open the refrigerator door and I pull out a carton of eggs and oh, I'm there there aren't very many left. And so with with the carton of eggs in one hand and my watch in my other, I will raise it and say those words and say, mm-hmm. add eggs to the shopping list. And and it just happens. I don't need to pull out another device from my other pocket that I can't reach right now or start to, it just, it just happens. Or like, you know, we have a, a home alarm and um, when I come home, sometimes I have a toddler in my arms. And so I, I need to turn off the alarm and nor, I could do that with an app on my iPhone, but I can't really, like, I got my toddler in this hand and I got my keys in this hand and I, my phone's buried in my pocket. There's just like no geometrical way to get at it. But I can still do like this, tap a couple of buttons on, on my on my watch and turn off the alarm. So stuff like that, I, I it just, it never occurred to me doing these things the way I used to do them. It never really occurred to me that there could be an easier way. I didn't think about it, but now that I've found a much easier way to do these things with the watch, I feel, I feel really hobbled without it. I also find that, um, like when we're in the car, because I I have an eight year old who is now getting more choosy about music. And so she'll be like, you know, dad, I would like to listen to this. And, um, uh, you know, my, my phone is set up to connect to, um, the car stereo by Bluetooth, but you know, it's a bad idea to be reaching for a phone while you're driving. Well, it's a lot easier to just, you know, let's see if I can, you know, turn your wrist like this as you're driving, say the magic words and say, you know, play Hamilton mixtape or something like that. And it will just do it. Um, yeah. which is also great. And it's interesting that you would bring up the car thing, Jeff. I've noticed that that, and I, and I too won't say the magic words, but I, in in if if I have something playing on the on the the stereo in the car, I don't want to interrupt it to invoke uh, Siri. Mm. So I, I can, but without interrupting it, I can raise and and in this case, I can bring it very close, and I'll block the mic here. Bring it very close to my mouth, and I don't have to shout at it. I just you know in a very normal tone say the magic words, you know, remind me of this or set this appointment or whatever. And, and it does it. And so it doesn't interrupt the flow of the music for anybody else in the car, but it gets that thing off my mind and puts it somewhere that I can make it actionable. It, as, as great as, as, oh, I better be careful. Uh, as great as the Amazon device is. <laughs> if, if I, All these things that we cannot say. If I say her right. name, she will appear. Um, <laughs> you know, it, I, I find myself... There, I have to. I, I find myself raising my voice to her, because I have to do that. Even though the mics are great, I still have to raise my voice. And this ability to, to have the control right on your arm, so that you can sort of adjust it. I can. I. I can have it, you know, out here and shout at it, or I can bring it up here and speak kind of intimately to it, and it does my bidding. So I, I really that Joe, like you say, it's it's kind of an unexpected thing that I didn't realize I'd do, but. It's now become part of my life, and now I don't want to live without it. Yeah, I also find it's great uh, for doing driving directions. Um, although it, it's it's interesting, um, like the the idea behind driving directions on the watch um, is good. It, it'll actually do different series of taps to tell you like left turn or right turn, um, and uh, maybe because. I'm not sensitive enough, but I usually find those to be fairly inscrutable. But it's easy enough to be able to, you know, glance at your watch and just see that, okay, you know, the the next turn is this street, turn left. Um, and, and not have to, um, you know, again, like consult the phone, um, even if, you know, Siri is, is sort of blaring in the background. Um, it's just... A, an easier way to do that, um, and actually even good for uh, walking directions too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we could go on about this uh, the, uh, for a long time, but I think the bottom line here is, folks, if you if you have an Apple Watch and you want to do more with it, this is the book you need. And if you're giving an Apple Watch, by all means, give uh, a copy of this with that watch. The 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 loved one or friend or whatever you're giving it to will get so much more out of it. Um. Guys, I, well, I'll address it to both of you, then you can take it. Um, what kind of pricing is there? What's Is there an upgrade policy, or is this just a version that is a free um, upgrade? 
Yeah, so it's a it's a ten dollar book. This is a, a crash course. So the the actual official title is Apple Watch: A Take Control Crash Course. Oops, my fault. Sorry. In retrospect, we might have come up with a shorter <laughs> way of of titling these books. But anyway, uh, Apple Watch: <laughs> Take Control Crash Course. It's ten bucks. Uh, it's a free update if you have an earlier version, um, and and well worth every penny. I'd say. It always is, and and this time you've got. I, how can you argue with two take control authors? So it's exactly. it's it's impossible. It can't be done. <laughs> Jeff, um, right quick, tell everyone where they can find you when you're not writing or not not writing take control books. <laughs> um, I'm at Joe Kissel's house. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, find me at uh, jeffcarlson.com or on Twitter at Jeff Carlson is the easiest. Great. It's good to have you. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. Happy holidays. Joe, when you're not under my Christmas tree. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like, like Jeff, like when, when would I not be writing that? I, of course I'm, I, I'm, I'm right here. I'm, I'm writing or I'm at Starbucks and I'm writing. Um, but, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Joe Kissel. And, um, you know, my website's like one of, one of my theoretically before the end of 2016, or if not, then definitely in the, within the next few years, um, planning to, uh, actually revise my website so that there's something interesting there to see. And they'll like, you know, display properly on modern devices. I'm, I'm a little at, at the moment, I'm a little embarrassed to say, go to my website, but, um, you know, uh, you'll you'll find lots of lots of my stuff at takecontrolbooks.com, and of course, uh, joeontech.net has uh, some of my other books. Great, thank you so much. Happy holidays to you as well and the family. Thank you, and likewise, folks. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I hope you're giving someone an Apple Watch because I still I, I absolutely believe it's one of the best presents you can give this year. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by BackBeat Media at BackBeatMedia.com. Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com. <laughs>